many people reached out after my video on why it's okay to be an average crocheter and, and a very common theme in the comments was that people felt left behind and behind on their crochet journey and, and just generally not at the level they wanted to be at. So if you're a person who feels like you're behind on your crochet journey, I'd like to talk to you today. First thing I want to start off by saying is that I wish I would have started sooner. I do, but that was also a common thread in the comments. And I think it's natural to feel that way. But just so you know, um, I was over 40 when I started crocheting. And I think I was like 45-ish when I started my crochet YouTube channel. So I've tried really hard to let go of that thought or that mentality that I wish I would have started sooner because think of what else I could have accomplished by then. You know, you see people who have uh, crochet channels, you know, that are five, ten years old and you think, wow, holy cow, if only I would have started then. But that's just not the case. And same way with crocheting. Uh, yeah, it would have been nice to start a little bit sooner, but at the same time, does it really matter in the scheme of things? My daughter probably would have had some cute crochet stuff when she was a kid, but other than that, you know, it's probably fine. So just know that it is a really common feeling that I think a lot of us have, and you're not alone if you're feeling that way. So the first thing I want you to consider if you are feeling like a late bloomer or behind in your crochet journey, or you wish you would have started earlier, is that I want you to really examine and see if you really are behind or not. What are you comparing yourself and your crochet skills to? I think it is so easy to get uh, trapped where we see all of our failures. You know, we see all the frogging we've done or we see um, a pile of abandoned whips that we're never going to return to. We see projects that we couldn't figure out and we look at those as failures. And then we get on YouTube and we see the highlight reels. Uh, I feel like Instagram is especially like notorious for this because you get on reels and it's like, um, you know, you're seeing 60 or 90 seconds, boom, 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 one right after another of all these beautiful crochet makes and, and whatnot. And um, that's definitely a highlight reel. What you're not seeing is the hours that that person spent, you know, making that pattern or making those items and uh, filming the reel as well. And you're not seeing all the times that that they have screwed up or messed up or given up. And you're just comparing your lows to their highs when it could probably just as easily be done in reverse. And while we're talking about social media, I kind of want to add in the fact that uh, there are very, very talented people on social media, for sure. I'm not saying they're not. But you have to understand, too, that a lot of what you're seeing, especially on Instagram with the photography and um, the filters and, you know, like with the reels where they're using different sounds and matching it up and all of that fun stuff, is that sometimes the reason a project looks really good is because of all the aesthetics around it and the project itself might not be any better than what you're creating and in fact it probably isn't i've also you know you also have to wonder like okay this project looks great on this person here but is it really practical is it something that's going to work i know i have seen tons and tons of very cute um, like shrugs and pullovers because i've been working on one but when i'm like closer examining them and looking a little bit more about how they're made you know i can see like a bunch of bunching or things where um you know it's like longer in the in the back than in the front when it's not supposed to be and um, seams are a little wonky and things like this and so it's like yeah at first glance when you see it it does look really cool because you're like taking in the whole experience of the whole instagram post and you're almost kind of like <laughs> how do i want to say this um adding more credibility to the piece just because of the way that it is presented 
I hope that makes sense. So that's kind of a slightly different tangent, but I want you to consider that if you're looking at some of your projects and seeing these online and you get the feeling like, ugh, you know, it really might not be any better or yours could actually even be, um, you know, made differently or I don't want to say better, but, you know, you might have more experience and yours might have came together a little bit nicer or more professional. And the other thing that I want you to think about too, if you happen to be comparing yourself with some of these people online, is that while they might be newer to crochet or newer to YouTube or Instagram or something like that, there's a good possibility that they have experienced this in another format before. So many people have had other YouTube channels or, you know, have had a blog and it kind of sets them ahead of the pace that everyone is taking because they already have experience doing it. And the same holds true. I mean, crochet is crochet, but if someone has knitted and they've come to crochet, if someone does a lot of sewing and they come to crochet, you know, they're bringing things to the table that um, you just don't have that knowledge of. And, and especially like when you look at sewing and stuff like that, where they're going to understand how a garment comes together um, better than a lot of us crocheters who are starting from scratch, you know, bringing that knowledge really adds a lot and makes it appear as though they are like skyrocketing ahead of us. Uh, but in reality, maybe they've worked on that other thing 10 or 20 or 30 years, and we just haven't seen all that process. We haven't seen their journey. We haven't seen everything that went into it, except, you know, maybe the six months they've been on YouTube and just exploded because their crochet is so amazing. Now, going into it with this fresh perspective and fresh eyes, if you're looking at your projects and you feel like you you are behind on your crochet journey because maybe your stitches just aren't quite right if you are really struggling to get some of the basics down um, i know like when i was very first starting out i really struggled with the aspect of at the end of the row like how many i needed to be chaining um, you know to keep those edges straight and sometimes they were wonky and i couldn't figure out why Sometimes I would get a little confused on how many times, you know, the yarn was supposed to go over the hook. There's tons of things to get confused about. There really is. And um, that's normal. What you'll want to do to make it a little bit easier on yourself is take a step back and go back to the basics, back to the beginning and work on some of those really, really basic stitches. And I will be the first to admit it's not fun or exciting to do that. It's really not. So I would encourage you to get um, a yarn, just like, a, you know, more of a value type yarn, but get one that feels good in your hands. Get one that you love the color, um, or maybe it's a striped yarn, or maybe it's a variegated, something to really keep your attention and keep it from not being monotonous, but also like that feels good in your hands and that you want to work with. If you absolutely hate Super Saver, don't pick up a Super Saver in a color you don't like just because it was cheap or right in front of you or whatever. Get something that really speaks to you and will help counteract that boredom. I know it's easy in the beginning when you see all these cute projects to want to kind of jump ahead and you get into it. I know I did this and while you're in the project, you realize there are stitches that you don't understand how to do. It seemed like the, the things that would sneak up on me and I'd be like, oh, I can learn this in the project was increases and decreases. So that was one. Uh, the other thing I kind of learned on the fly would have been, um, uh, not front post double crochets, but back post double crochets. And then I was trying to learn on a hat where it was alternating them. And I absolutely love the look and I do it all the time now, but that's something where that going from the front to the back, it was so hard to get those back posts. And I would have to stop the project, find somebody's tutorial and bring it up and rewatch it a couple of times. So I would encourage you to put down any larger projects you have, whether it's a blanket or a wearable or whatever, take a step back, grab the yarn and a hook you like, and also a hook that um, 
the yarn label is telling you to use just so it makes it much easier for you and start working on those very very basic stitches i know a ton of people have really really great stitch tutorials so there are a plethora plethora of them out there i am going to say that um, off the top of my head what i'm going to link to is a playlist from my friend jesse at sweet moments by jesse and like i said i know a bunch of my friends have other ones too She's just partnered with me in the past on a stitch tutorial that I was, I wanted to do the stitch in a project, but I couldn't make a good tutorial. <laughs> so Jessie partnered with me on that and made it. So I know that she's got a great playlist and I know um, what's on there and everything. So I'll go ahead and link that uh, down in the description box if you're wanting somewhere to go to learn some of those real basic stitches. I can kind of hear my dog so I apologize if you can hear him too. I'm filming this on Father's Day and um, our daughter just showed up. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's why he's going bonkers downstairs. While we might feel we're behind or we might be behind or both, I want you to understand that maturity and being older can bring a whole different perspective to your work. I know for me, the biggest issue I have struggled with is impatience and wanting to skip ahead till um, I'm really good at something and wanting to take in all the information all at once and be able to do it really well right away. As I have gotten older, I feel like I have grown more patient. And I'm sure there's other characteristics that we have all improved on as we have gotten older. And I just want you to think that maybe you are in the right place at the right time, but you could be exactly where you should be right at this moment. And I know it's probably likely that I would have gotten frustrated in my 20s and or even my 30s and probably quit crochet. And, you know, maybe I would have disliked it so much I never would have come back to it and I would have missed out on so much. You know, it. I think that second guessing, not starting earlier, it's the exact same thing in reverse. Like you have so many great qualities now that you didn't have when you were younger that you can bring to your crochet journey now. And maybe it's something where if you're learning now and you're struggling a little bit, maybe you would have struggled a whole bunch back then. Like there really are benefits to learning things when we are a little bit older. So please keep that in mind if you're feeling a little bit frustrated about where you're at on your crochet journey. I'm very, very thankful to have this opportunity to talk about yarn and crochet with you. I look forward to talking again. Bye.